Hello everyone. Uh, while I was reading something in literature, as you know, I am a student of literature. I thought of doing something different today, something very interesting, something very sensual. I thought of doing a poem by Andrew Marvel, that is to his coy mistress. It is a metaphysical poetry. So before we get into metaphysical poetry and everything about it, let's do a poem by Andrew Marvel that is to his coy mistress and it is one of the masterpiece that a poet can ever uh, has ever given to English literature. Many of the critics have said that out of all the poems that Andrew Marvel has written, this poem stands among all. So let us see, I may not be that perfect with my reading of the poem, with my recitation, but I'll surely try to make it the best. To His Coy Mistress by Andrew Marvin Had we but world enough and time, this coyness lady were no crime. We would sit down and think which way to walk and pass our long love's day. Though by the Indian gauges find, should rubies find, I by the tide of hunger would complain. I would love you ten years before the flood, and you should, if you please, refuse till the conversion of the Jews. My vegetable love should grow vaster than empires and more slow and hundred years should go to praise thine eyes and on thy forehead gaze two hundred to adore each breast but thirty thousand for the rest an age at least to every part and the last age should show your heart for lady, you deserve this state, nor would I love you at lower rate. But at my back, I always hear time's winged chariot hurry near, and wonder all before us lie, deserts of vast eternity, thy beauty shall no more be found, nor in thy marble vault shall sound. My echoing song then worms shall try that long preserved virginity and your quaint hue honor turn to dust. And into ashes all my lust, the graves a fine and private place, but now I think do their embrace. Now therefore, while the youthful hue sits on thy skin like morning dew and while thy willing soul transpires at every pore with instant fires now let us sport as while we may and now like amorous birds of prey rather at once our time devour than languish in his snow shot pur let us roll all our strength and all our sweetness up into one ball and tear our pleasures with rough strife through the iron gates of life. Thus, though we cannot make our son stand still, yet we will make him run. So this was surely, this is surely a masterpiece that we have who are opting to take literature for their further studies will be getting this poem. And when you read this poem one time, you will wish to read it for a more thousand and hundred times. So this poem has its own beauty. So before moving on to the uh, analysis of To His Coy Mistress, let us first see what metaphysical poetry is about. 
Now we have metaphysical poets like John Donne. John Donne has also given us many of the masterpieces. For that we will be moving on to that later. So why was metaphysical poetry introduced? We had the 17th century English literature and there was a trend of romanticism all around. Now, the great poets of that era was John Donne, Herbert, Mar Marvel and Vaughan. Now, these poets, they are called the metaphysical poets. And metaphysical poets, they were introduced as a revolt against the honeyed and the sweetness of romanticism and against all the sentimentalism. Now, we have the poets done. Herbert. Marvel They all are known as the great poets of the metaphysical period. Metaphysical period was introduced as a revolt against the sentimentalism. So that was the main reason of this metaphysical poetry. Now Dryden first used the term metaphysics, metaphysical for dance poetry. Okay. And meta means beyond and physics means physical. Meta, that is metaphysics. Meta means beyond. And Physics means physical nature. Now there are many characteristics of metaphysical poetry. They have the habit of saying something that has never been said before. This is very much prevalent in the metaphysical poetry. That is they say something which is very uncommon. That has never ever been said before. They use excessively, they have this habit of using figure of speech, okay? They use figure of speech, hyperbole, and their similes and their similes and metaphors are far-fetched and they are often drawn from unfamiliar sources. Now the main thing of metaphysical poetry is that as they never concentrated on sentimentalism. Okay. They never had the habit of, they never got into this honeyed idea that romanticism had. They always had logic and intellect. Their poems always had logic and 
intellect. Whatever they wrote, it was a logic and of intellect. They had the combination of logic and intellect. Now, according to T.S. Eliot, metaphysical poetry displays a fusion of uh, emotions and intellect and it makes it an intellectual analysis of emotions. Now, if we go on to further, then we will be having, then we will be learning John Donne and his various poems and how he has described metaphysical poetry. Not only his poem had metaphysics in it, not only his poem had intellect and logic, but he was also known for his love poems also. His poem included spirituality, love, lust, body. Okay, his bodily urges, the sexual favors that he wanted. Now, in this poem, in Andrew Marvel, what he has written, we will see what is the real meaning that he has wanted to give us. Okay. Like I said, uh, Andrew Marvel, he wrote many poems. He wrote many poems, but of all the poems, some of his poems are considered to be very, very important. Like to his poem mistress, the fair singer, the unfortunate lover. And the other poems are not given much importance. Now the critics say that this uh, to his coy mistress is acknowledged as the masterpiece of Marvel. Okay. And one critic, another critic who has an adverse opinion about his other love poem agrees that this is a unique love poem and for its sheer power it ranks higher than anything ever written by him. Now we shall see what this great poem has for us. Also, Andrew Marvel was very famous for his nature poems as well. His relationship with the nature was outstanding. It was like nature has done some sort of spell on him and he would be spending his entire life for the nature. He had so much love for the nature that he told the entire world that instead of loving the beautiful lips and the fair complexion of a lady, come to nature, sit under a tree and see what nature has for us. Now, if you say in case of nature, we won't be having sensuality, but that is not very true. In case of nature as well, Andrew Marvin has given us sensuality. Like when the grapes fall on his head and when the juice, it goes onto his lips. It is an account of sensuality that we find that we will be getting it in his poem, The Garden. Now, let's come to the main part. As I said, Andrew Marvin is known for this poem, that is to his poem mistress. And in this poem, he is asking, he is, he is making an appeal to his beloved that please get out of your rigidity and grant me the sexual pleasure. That is the main main thing of the poem. It is a love poem. Okay. So here he is saying that please grant me the sexual flavor, uh, favor. The lover here puts up his case vehemently with equally solid arguments. Now he is telling his beloved that why she should be doing so. Why she should be getting indulging with him into this sexual thing and 
it is the arguments are so solid that he builds up for him that no man that none no girl can reject his uh, opinion okay the beginning of the poem strikes with these keynotes when you see the beginning of the poem there is keynotes if only it begins with if only why is he saying if only if only they were not subjected to the laws of space and time they could play out the fantasy of a love which slowly expands over the face of the earth like an empire and which lasts right through human history from noah's blood to the second coming of christ heralded by the conversion of the jews such fantasies are among the devices human art has invented to cope imaginatively with the facts of time and mortality now the poem presents a metaphysical conceit in a pictorial way what is it the lover is talking of his love in a very fantastic and unrealistic way as well had we enough time and space at our disposal we would have done this this is really a bit funny and moreover lover saying that he would love his mistress for a 10 time time 10 years before the flood and would spend hundred and thousands of years in admiring and adoring her various parts of the body it is nothing but a metaphysical conceit okay it is nothing but a metaphysical conceit so here as you all can see that this uh, uh, the andrew marvin he is very disparate for his beloved for love making now he have been been said about conceit conceit is a kind of simile conceit is a kind of simile okay it is a kind of simile or metaphor when the poet or when the poet tries to compare two vastly different images through the force of his advocacy okay it is a kind of simile or metaphor so here in andrew marvel's to his coy mistress we have seen there are a lot of conceits that he has used like he, when he says that he will be loving before 10 years of the flood and after that he will be loving her more and adoring her various parts of the body now the poet is has drawn a realistic picture of times wind chariot that is moving fast and is asking them that before it moves towards eternity they should seize the moment and they should be enjoying the pleasure that they are longing for okay and there is here there we will be getting another metaphysical conceit in the concluding stanza where the mistress's willing soul is depicted as giving out instant fires at every pore and the lovers are directing all their efforts and energies to produce a source of rolling fireball and tearing their pleasures with rough strife through the iron gates of life here we see metaphysical conceit all over again now this poem 
is witty okay and thus presents his idea so the whole poem is marked by metaphysical conceit and a streak of irony runs through it the lover is making making fun of his mistress's coyness he is making fun if the lovers had enough time and the beloved may not agree till the conversion of the jews are witty and they are ironical remarks lover also speaks of his vegetable love growing faster than empires the way lover is admiring the beauty of his beloved and would spend spend hundred and thousands of years to admire her charm is another instance of wit now marvel's versification put the feelings of desolation and the epigrammatic force of this line and the reflection on the horrors of tom which follow it could be paralleled in many of the dance lyrics as well so this was about and uh, marvels to his coy mistress is of course the result of his direct deriving the theme of the latin poet catculus though with a difference and we all know that marvel marvel he was known for his quality of poem where all his charm lies he is known for his terseness he is known for his wit his sensuousness that makes him one of the most known poets his poetry also has humor and his poetry has hyperbolic is hyperbolic in fancy though the hyperbole fits the loneliness of the pastoral world so as you can see i have given you a glimpse of this poem because what <clears throat> how much you read no matter how much you read we you will never get exhausted with the beauty of this poem the poem is so beautiful that it is capable of taking away your uh, it is entering into your world of dreams as well so in order to know literature you will have to know them as well and when you learn literature you actually love literature you don't learn if you love literature then it comes to you automatically so that was a different topic for today next day we'll be coming up with something new maybe a poetry or a prose so for that stay with us and be updated thank you